On this week's show, we make a return visit to Germany's Pfalz. Our featured wine is a Riesling, and it's nice. In fact, very nice. And it's coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of Big On Wine, the channel which, uh, as you probably know by now, attempts to bring you news, clues and reviews. Indeed, we want to bring you right up to speed with everything that's happening in the world of wine. And my wine of the week for this week is indeed from Germany and Germany's faults. And it's this one here. It goes under the name of Nice Riesling Hochgewächs and the vintage is 2019. And where I am, this comes in for a price of just under 14 euro a bottle. Okay, the producer of this wine is Weingut Nice, and they're based in a small municipality called Kindenheim in the Northern Pfalz. Now that's about 200 kilometers or so due east of Luxembourg, and 90 kilometers or so southeast of Frankfurt. And of course, the River Rhine is just 15 kilometers or so away. So on the left bank of the Rhine. Fine, Weingut Nice was established in 1547. So they've had quite a long time to refine their winemaking techniques. And the vineyard covers about 25 hectares of a land. Now the name Hochgewex refers to a category of wine which is higher than the traditional Qualitätswein and it indeed indicates special care in selecting and picking the grapes, indeed picking the grapes at the absolutely most optimal time. This is a vegan wine and it also carries an eco certificate so the green credentials are perfectly in order. It has about seven grams per litre of residual sugar. Okay, that's the backstory. Let's take a look at the wine in the glass. And as we can see, the wine in the glass has a fairly typical uh, color for a Pfalz Riesling. It has that lovely light straw gold hue to the wine. It looks very nice indeed. All right, without further ado, let's turn our attention to the nose on the wine. So let's give it a sniff. Here we go. Yes, indeed, a very typical aroma on this wine. The first impression that I'm getting here is of lovely fruitiness in the wine. Um, if I have to put a name to the fruit in question, I would say we're moving in the area of peach and apricot. Um, there's almost a little touch of sweetness in the nose as well. Of course, this is seven grams um, per litre of residual sugar. It's not a particularly um, sweet wine at all. Um, yes, a little touch of honey and also I think just a, at the back there some nice minerality in the wine as well. So it promises a lot, promises lovely fruit. It also has a, a solid backbone of miner minerality based on the nose at least. All right, let's try it in the palate, see how we get on. Here we go. Now, first impressions are of a wine which is bursting with fruitiness, but right at the back of the mouth now, the sides of the tongue, the acid is beginning to talk to me. This has a lovely mouth-filling, mouth-watering effect in the mouth. Now, compared to the nose, which was dominated by peach and apricot, I think here we're certainly dealing with something slightly more different in terms of flavors. I would be putting it more in the direction of white currant, sharper taste here, green apple maybe as well. Um, and certainly the acidity is almost citrusy in its bite there. So it has a very, very pronounced zingy acidity to this wine here. The minerality comes through very much In the finish of the wine, we're left with a very long, lingering, citrusy, mineral finish, which really is very pronounced and lingers long in the mouth and also is mouth-wateringly delicious. 
an excellent wine by any standards. All right, now let's have a think about what we're going to be enjoying this with, or how we're going to be enjoying it. And I think this is a wine that should be served around about the nine or 10 degree mark for best results. Now this can easily be served as an aperitif. It's a wine that would very nicely accompany a whole range of starters. But if we're looking for a main course suggestion, then probably grilled fish, seafood, and probably salads come into question here. So it's very much an all-rounder aperitif and would accompany uh, fish and seafood. Let's bring you the heads up on this one because this is a good one. This is nice Riesling Hochgewex. The vintage is 2019. It's yet another example of the fantastic wines now being made in the modern style in Germany and particularly in the Pfalz. It's dry, it's fruity, it has lovely acidity with lots of attention paid to quality and fully deserving of four stars out of five. Okay, folks, many, many thanks for tuning in and checking out this week's video. And of course, this was a little introduction to yet another first class Riesling from Germany's Pfalz. Fine, but nice this time, the producer. Lovely stuff indeed. Okay, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please do feel free to give us a big thumbs up. Yeah, give us a like. We do enjoy getting those. Drop a comment down below. Share the video around to your heart's content. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please do consider doing so. And why worry about it, why not hit that little bell icon down below and you'll be informed as soon as every new video is uploaded. And actually, I'll be back again next week with another great Wine of the Week for you. But uh, until we meet again, this is Tony Mother signing off and saying, hey, take care out there. Be good to each other. Enjoy your wines. And cheers.